right, so we talked about amplitude, we talked about vertical shift. The next thing is called period. Period. Now with this, um, if you think about it like a real life situation, um, sorry girls, or ladies, um, kind of like what a woman goes through every month. It's a full cycle that they go through every single month. Some people it's like clockwork. Some people is actually like it changes and stuff. But when it comes to what we're talking about is that that period, that's that full cycle that happens over and over and over again. So when it comes to our period, this is one full cycle of a trig function, a trigonometric function. So it's one full cycle. Now, when it comes to our two functions that we have of sine and cosine, they have the same um, period. One full cycle goes the same amount of same amount of um, time, for sine and cosine. So I'm graphing these out, just so we can do it. Also, you have it on your parent graph paper that um, the graphic. Um, organizer that we did. So here we already know it's negative one down here, positive one. We have these going. Okay, again, remember you have to remember those. When it kind of comes to our graphs, you know sine, the sine graph comes this way. I'm going to get rid of one label that sign so you know. This is our sine function. And this is our cosine function. Ooh, that's bad. So hopefully your, your cosine function looks better than mine. Ooh, that looks bad. And for each one of those, one full cycle going up and then coming back down, back to here, is 2 pi. It takes 2 pi to get for one full cycle. Same thing here for the cosine. It takes a 2 pi to get from the first part all the way through to get back to that same point again. So the original period for these functions It's 2 pi. That's the original. Now, what's going to happen is it's not always going to be the original 2 pi. It's going to change depending on the actual function and everything. So here, our 2 pi is the original part. So we're going to figure out what's going to happen now with the other parts. So we get originally. So to find our, um, our period for the new function, transformed function. We must use this formula. And this formula never changes. It's going to always be the exact same thing. And something about math, everybody keeps saying, well, is it going to change? How do you know it's going to be the same? Guys, this will always work no matter what happens. No matter what, it's always going to be 2 pi divided by k. Every single time. Every time. Whether it's sine or cosine, it's going to work the same way. And so here I'm going to write this down again. I'm going to write this down again. So y equals a sine k theta plus c plus h. Remember, theta, same thing as saying y, um, x. a cosine k theta plus c plus h. And again, here, we're talking about the k. So that 2 pi over whatever that is in front of x, in front of k, um, the theta. Whichever, whatever that number is, that's the k. And that's what we divide with. So here, and just to make sure everybody sees it and hopefully understands, 
We already talked about A, we talked about the H, now we're dealing with K. Right, and let me go ahead and write this part also, because I just said it, but I want to make sure that everybody has it. K is the number in front of the angle. And here our angle, I'm going to give you the parts, is either x or theta. So whatever's in front of x and, or theta, that's what k is. That's always what k is. Okay, so let's go and take a look at example three here. And all we're going to do is find out what k is and find out what the period is. And that's all we're going to do here. So here's example three. In our directions, we're going to need to find k. Find, I thought, find k and the period. Just find the k and find the period. And that's really irking me, so let me write over that. So find k and find period. And let's take a look at this function here of y equals, and let's do, let's do two. Let's do y equals 4 sine 5 theta. And then we're going to do a part B also so we can get another practice with it. So if we look at just this one here, what is our k value here? What is the number that's right in front of either theta or x? It's that part right there. So k equals 5. All right, so to find our period, we're going to do 2 pi over whatever k is. So again, period is 2 pi over k. And in this case, our k is 5. So we're going to do 2 pi over 5. And that's it. That's all you have. That's all you do to find k. That find period. Sorry. So two pi over k. All right. So let's throw another one in here just to throw it in to see how you guys do. And everybody loves fractions, so I have to throw a fraction in here to make sure everybody can see the whole thing. So I'm giving you y equals 6 cosine 3 over 4, 3 fourths x. And again here, what is your k? What is the number in front of x or theta? Hopefully everybody sees that answer is 3 over 4. It's the number right in front of x or theta. So if we're trying to find our period here, Oops, sorry. That's three over four. My fault. I'm sorry. I thought you guys could see it. All right. So again, k is three pi over uh, three over four, because that's the number that's in front of x. The number that's right in front of x. So here, our period again is two pi over k. Two pi divided by k. And since our k is a fraction, you're gonna you're gonna have to do something. We've already talked about this in class already. We're going to have to do the keep, change, flip. Keep, change, flip. So here, we're going to keep the 2 pi. We're going to change division to multiplication. And we're going to flip the 3 over 4. So if we flip 3 over 4, that make it 4 over 3. We flip it. So again, keep, change, flip. And the only thing now is to go ahead and work it out. Get your final answer for a period. So it's understood to be one here because it's a whole number. Two pi is a whole number. So it's understood one. So what we're going to do is multiply straight across and then be done with it. So if we do two pi times four, don't put that in the calculator because 
is going to give you this long drawn out decimal that we don't need. We're just going to do 2 times 4 gives you 8 and keep the pi. So again, 2 times 4 gives you 8 and then you keep the pi. And then we do the bottom of 1 times 3 gives you 3. And 8 pi over 3 is your period. That's it. So not a whole lot of work to be done. That's it. So with this, that's all you have to do when it comes to finding your, your period. Figure out what k is, and then do 2 pi divided by k.